close your eyes and take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where the breath is clear in the body. We can tell. Now it's coming in, now it's going out. Focus your attention there. And then ask yourself if it's comfortable. You can experiment for a while. You can try shorter breathing, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. See what rhythm of breathing feels best for the body right now. There's so many issues in the world outside. You don't want to create is unnecessary issues inside. No need to create unnecessary dis-ease or discomfort inside. So you can make the breath as comfortable as you want. That's one less weight on the mind. And as the Buddha pointed out, the real weights on the mind are the ones that we place on it. Things outside can be bad enough. But the mind suffers only if you grab hold of those things outside and bring them in, carry them around as weights inside. So at the very least, have some time every day to put the weights aside so you're not weighed down so much. Have some time for yourself. The mind spends all too much time being a slave to the world, a slave to the body. The body has these needs, and it needs to move, it needs to do this, it needs to do that, it needs to eat, it needs to go to the bathroom. And then it gets sick here and sick there, and you have to take care of it. And the mind really has time to look after itself. Because not only are the issues in the body, but then there are issues in the world outside. So it's good to take some time every day, every day, just to look at your mind and see what it's saying to itself. A lot of the suffering comes from the way we talk to ourselves. And so the Buddha teaches us to talk to ourselves in new ways, ways that are more encouraging, to remind us that the real value in life comes from the ways in which you're generous, the way in which you're virtuous. You abstain from harming yourself, harming others, and the control you can get over your mind. The world may not recognize that, but when you start practicing in line with the Buddha's teachings, you begin to recognize that the, what the Buddha said is true, that real happiness comes from the things you do in these areas. So make sure you have time every day to add some worth to the mind, add some worth to your actions. Because being generous doesn't mean just being generous in terms of material things. It also means being generous with your time, generous with your energy, generous with your knowledge, generous with your forgiveness. When you're generous in these ways, it lifts the level of the mind. And you realize that you have a lot more wealth inside than you thought you did. A sense of spacious mind, a mind that has more than enough. Try to maintain that as you go through the day. And you find that the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, the way the world treats you, doesn't have to reach into the mind. The mind can have its own source of strength that radiates out. You maintain that. And you can live in this world without having to suffer from the world. to take advantage of the fact that we've heard the Buddha's teachings. He points us to looking after our minds. Make sure you take care of your mind. Keep it in good shape. And the word mind here doesn't mean just a thinking process, but everything that goes into your consciousness. Look after that. And the goodness of that kind of mind will then radiate out, sustaining you and helping people around you as well.